So the uh, next and only other item on the agenda, discussion on the amendment to the agreement for services between the Board of Health and FERPA. Um, do we have anybody that wants to go first? Maybe Phoebe? Phoebe, would this be time for you to explain what the amendment is and, and how the agreement works? Sure. Um, so I, um, let me see, let me start by, I'm assuming you guys know a fair amount about the health district, but it was created uh, about 2011 in a, in a um, countywide planning process um, that uh, about 20 towns took part in and then various communities over the course of the last um, 10 years have joined. So we started out with five members and we're up to on July 1st with the addition of Ashfield, we will be at 16. Um, the way it's structured is there are four programs. So the, the towns who created this district were really clear that they wanted to be able to be partial members or you know just be part of the things that they needed. Um, and so there are four programs. There is uh, public health nursing, which Conway has been a member of since the very beginning, um, and long before it was a it was an actual district. Um, then there's um, private well in Title V. Then there's community sanitation, which is like housing, hoarding, pools, beaches, camp inspections, uh, nuisance complaints, and then there's uh, food safety, which is pretty obvious what that is. So any town can be a member of any of those. Right now we have four towns that are just nursing members, and that is Deerfield, Irving, Northfield, and Ashfield. In Berniston, um, we are every they are members of everything except the Title V, which the the powers the former board of health chair is uh, the Title V agent for. Um, and we're here to discuss Conway joining uh, in a very similar way to Bernston, um, where the um, where community sanitation and food would be added to the existing nursing uh, contract. So the way that works, um, the, you know, it's a big change for the kind of involvement that you have for a long time, for, I don't know, 16 years, it must be now you've had Lisa White as your town nurse, you've done you know any annual health clinics, stuff with the flu clinic, the wellness, um, the wellness clinics that are beginning again this Friday, I think, finally after COVID, which is exciting. Um, and so this would be adding to the team the two health agents from the FERCOG, uh, Lisa Jenny Burke and Randy Crozier, um, and they would be available to um, do the board's mandated, you know, responsibilities in terms of inspection. Um, for those two areas, food safety and um, community sanitation, which basically means that they would inspect um, anything that was where food is being served, um, any lodging, and um, respond to housing complaints and inspect summer camps. Um, the way that the system works for the towns that share the health agents is that those towns have negotiated among themselves a shared permit fee schedule um, and that funding is collected uh, through an online permitting program. So everybody who is served in, you know, Roe, Heath, Coleraine, Lyden, Shelburne, Buckland, Charles, Montgill, all those folks, if they're applying for a food permit or they're applying for a perk test or they're applying for a plan review, will apply through the same portal um, and pay the same amount um, for the services. That money is collected centrally and used to reduce the assessment of the towns who um, use generate that that revenue so directly it is directly connected to the cost to be in the program and offsets the, the price um, let's see and then the health agents are available to come to they come to just about every board of health meeting um, um, anytime they're asked and um, and that means most of the boards of health meet um, meet monthly and ask them to come every month and they do the online permitting program has a read-only access, um, which anybody uh, from town hall could have access to, and certainly the Board of Health can have uh, more than read-only access um, if they would like to be the ones to continue to like actually issue the permits. Um, 
they can um, continue to play that role. Uh, it's sort of each town has a slightly different way they like to work with between the agents and the Board of Health, and we work that out between the agents and the Board of Health. Um, but everybody can see everything that's happening on their behalf. Every time there's an inspection, like say a food inspection, the report is emailed to the board and it's also visible within the inspection uh, software and ditto for any like orders, you know, housing orders or anything like that. But it's a level of um, working very closely with the Board of Health um, that, you know, it's not like you're farming it out to some group you'll never hear from again. Um, and I think that one of the strengths of the program is that the group together is able to come up with a lot of really interesting educational projects and sort of shared um, shared projects like our work that we've been doing in a number of the towns on abandoned and distressed housing where the AG's office is providing support and receivership um, to uh, properties. We do a lot of tick form, you know, tick outreach together, which you've probably seen the signs all around town and the tick testing program I'm sure you know about, you guys have been members of for a long time. Um, so it's a great, a great group of boards of health members. Um, the, the board meets monthly and has oversight over, um, is involved in any hiring. We were just today um, hiring our, our second public health nurse, thanks to Jackie for being on the hiring committee. Um, and um, any uh, permit, you know, fees are exclusively adopted there at, the, at that board level, any policy changes, anything like that. So there is a great deal of um, input into um, how the district works from the board. So the contract amendment that you have before you basically just adds those can two other things to the um, can you raise my hand? Your existing contract. Becky, yes. I mean, yeah, Becky, uh, can I add one thing you didn't Phoebe. mention that I think is important Phoebe. about the, Phoebe. I mean, Phoebe, sorry, Becky, I'm sorry, Becky, you know that, I know your name. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm Devon, by the way, for those that don't know me. One of the things that I, she didn't mention that I think is very important to us at the Board of Health here now is the fact that we are welcome to attend any and all inspections that Randy would go out to so that we can actually learn from them what the process is because you are sitting in front of three people who are on your board who I am the most knowledgeable because I am a value-added producer who has been inspected, but I am not an inspector. I know what I need to do to make my jam and sell it, but that is a very important thing that I think you should be aware of. Um, totally so. agree. It's a real benefit any time a board of health member comes to us. It's, it's great. And, and so that's not a Conway thing. That's a across the board. Any board member can go. Yep. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't bring some other board member in New York town, but yeah, and in any in any community, absolutely. Yep. And we do, and we do. We have some towns again where some towns where we've got very engaged folks who want to come on all the you know housing inspections who want to be part of the food inspections and then we've got some communities where you know they're busy doing other things that the that the board of health is is involved in and so they don't want to come along with they review the reports or you know pick in, peek into the software and you can and in the software let me be clear it's not a static thing you can chat you know so you can leave a message and be like i don't understand what does this mean how come you found this or can you call me about this i don't understand what that means and then we'll, when we see the message and we call you so so can, can I just sort of try to rephrase what you said? Just um, it, it, so you, basically, the, the reason that the Board of Health is seeking um, the FERCOG's uh, assistance in doing the food safety is because currently there is no one certified on the Board of Health to do it. Correct. And not, I want to go beyond that. Okay. It's not just certification, they have no clue <laughs> okay. what to do. Okay. Yeah, like why is like why is okay. it okay. It's like why don't I come and put a new tar driveway in your driveway and I have no experience. Let me do it. I'll go do it right now. That's what we're being asked to do. I mean ever since we lost Marie I can you know, she was our person that did it and uh, we don't have anybody as knowledgeable as her. And who's Randy? So Randy works with Phoebe. Uh, and the FROCOG, and he is their, one of their key people who has many, uh, 20, over 20 years experience. Randy was on his board of health for 30 years, just got off it, and has been a selectman in Gill for 10 years, I think. 
yeah. and was our food safety agent here for about five years and then became the full-time health agent um, a couple years ago. And he has um, certification beyond, not, we're not, I am sort of safe certified because I make gem, but Randy is state certified, Phoebe? Yeah, he's nationally, um, he, so he went through the whole process of becoming a national food, you know, standardized. The FDA has a program where they're trying to make sure that across the country, everybody's sort of treated fairly in the same way and based in science. And so they have a lengthy program that um, he went through to become FDA officially standardized. Um, and then he has all the other stuff. You know, he's a public water supply operator. He's a lead determinator. Every, every board of health is required to have access to a lead determinator. You have to have one on, you know, available to your staff in case there's ever a housing complaint for any house um, where before, maybe before 1978 where there's a child under six. Um, you know, and he has all the other things, Title V, but that's not anything you're looking for. Housing, inspection, training, cool. So how many commercial establishments in Conway would be affected by the decision to join the Furcox partnership? I, I, don't, I can't tell you that off the top of my head. So we don't know. Um, well, somebody knows. And Ginny, Ginny would know. Um, Your annual report looking, listed. You know, I can't tell you off the top of my head. What do we have? We have Bakers, Conway Inn. Yeah. Yeah. Conway Inn. I think there were and the I school. Know, we talked. There the were school. sixteen down below that were food safety as well. So I guess mm -hmm. it kind of means which which institutions you're you're thinking of. But well, I mean, just, I mean, like you said, you make jam, so yeah, yeah, it's not just like no, yeah. it, it's small, it's entrepreneurs like myself who yeah. sell at farmers market or at the farm stand. You know, if it were at my house, um, if, if I'm selling to the public. And so right now, all of those inspections happen by the Board of Health. They have been. When we're, if we haven't done any this year yet. Right. Okay. We are overdue, and we need to do them. I mean, there's things also not involving food, like earthworks. Right. Camp. Camp. And, oh, that's uh, okay. And okay. we did right. natural roots is on the. Yep. Assistant. Natural roots and. And Jesus, we have a few. Uh, there's another camp in town. And there's a bunch of private people like yourself. I don't know. I've only been yeah. to two. <laughs> there's yeah. there's um, honest, road. I mean, um, did we have that list that Jenny sent us? Does it have everybody on it? It does. We, we have in it a that. PDF, but I. I oh, the South Park. Yeah, I don't have it. But I mean, there's a yes, we do have a team or so. Um, yeah. So what we would be having the FERCOG take over basically is something that like the Board of Health has always done locally. Yes. And that right. we really want the Board of Health to be able to do. As soon as they are able to, because um, it's really you know the 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 when this word word got out the 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 owner of our only our only actual restaurant um, it just is, has been ringing my phone off the hook begging me to turn this down begging me to say no to this. Can you and tell me is that Baker's or is it the yes, Conway? Yes. Yes. Okay. And and. Why? and so, so the the inspector went there on Thursday. To, it, uh, Randy went there on Thursday to introduce himself, and um, you know that that that's all well and good. But talking about how he's you know how you're the serve safe uh, professor at the community college um, when the business owner is just hoping and praying that you understand the concept of grandfathering and that you you are able to show. Uh, um, uh, you know the the a, a knowledge of local business the, the, and the history of it, and that you know if, if the result of this is is one of our local businesses being asked to do undertake tens of thousands of dollars in renovations and new plumbing and new sink and new this and that, then that would be disastrous. We would lose the restaurant. Of course it would be. Of course, I mean I, I really can't stress enough how incredibly focused on. Um, education and interim steps and you know humane interactions with people Randy is I mean he is a really really wonderful guy who is a long time small town government you know in right I mean he's a selectman he's a board of health member he's he is absolutely a believer in helping people keep people safe without being um Oh, you know, draconian. I, I really, I, I think I would encourage you to call other, you know, call other towns where he does this, doing this work in literally every town around you. And I don't think you will find anybody who says that he shut them down. Yeah. 
him. I mean, he really is a very, um, a very compassionate person, and certainly would, that would not be our style at all, you know, to be coming in there and shutting somebody down. Uh, um, you know, I think the main thing is that the town needs to be able to say that it is meeting its state mandated responsibilities to keep people who eat food and sleep and send their children and bathe at public the public pond, you know, in Conway safe, right? And right now your board of health doesn't have the people who have the certifications to be able to do that. And you're you know, you're already members of this thing that allow you to very easily get that help while you need it. And if the board gets those certifications and wants a job back, just to be clear, totally fine with us. You know, we're here, you're, you guys have been members of this forever. And you, you helped build it so that it would be like this. I mean, Dave Chichester was one of the architects of this district so that it would be designed in this exact way. So that it would be here for you when you needed it. And when you don't need it anymore, you can leave. But and the, and, and I, was, you know, I would add, so, Phil. One other point is you get part way into this program Okay, you can't get back out. Yes, you can. You just have to give the years. You have to pay an additional year of, of your of your dues or, or whatever they are in order to in order to get back out of the program again. So if your people come up to speed, okay, you're you're stuck with the dues for another year before you can get back out again. Well, this is to be great. clear, we would of course continue to provide service during well, that. Well, of course, yeah. But it's not like a, it's not like a, a penalty or Yeah. This is a three-year commitment, and most of it is funded by a grant that Phoebe wrote that is allowing us even to not have to pay anything additional because it's being subsidized by this grant. And I don't think it is unreasonable to say that two in two years, we learn. This is not something, I'm going to speak for myself. I have a full-time job. I have a business in addition to the full-time job. I am not going to have time. I have not had time. I'm not going to read all the manuals, okay? It is going to take that much time to do this right. And I'm going to sit here in front of all of you. If somebody is not abiding in a cleanliness way, I will accordingly report that on my inspection, and I absolutely will work with them on what needs to be done to be improved. And I know from my own work experience that this organization works with people in that same manner. Like, it's not to say, I don't want you to be here. And by the way, I have lived here for 23 years. So I'm not a, just a newbie. But I am very concerned about the expectations that have been put upon us and that mentality of it's been done that way for years I should just be able to go out with the paper and say compliant 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 no I will not and I will I will not if that's what you all want I am not here for that so I I stress to you that it's not something that happens overnight. It doesn't, this is, these are, I, I help farmers across the valley with food safety. And our rules are becoming so mandated. And it is becoming so hard for our farmers to be sustainable, but they gotta know what they can be fined for. Because when they fine you, it will put you in there. So having a group that can train us to help before you get caught, because under the radar is not as easy as it used to be. When we have farmers getting fined for that, it's just a matter of time when our smaller towns start getting fined too. So, so who, who are the farmers you're talking about? Would this be somebody who, who grows corn and has a corn stand? I mean, yeah, uh -uh. everybody. It's, it's Red Fire Farm. It's, natural roots. It's Everybody who sells to the public. 
anybody that sells direct sales. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. even yeah. wholesale, because uh -huh. wholesale is even more strict, because you need HIPAA and, um, like, you have HIPAA, you have HACCP, it's harder yeah. wholesale. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I want to do what's right by everybody. What would the alternative training program be other than this? I mean, does the county have a tr program that would lead to certification or a a any, you know, um, some other way? Yeah. There are a number of training programs we would need, but the state does have some of them. So, for instance, I mean, it all depends a little bit on whether the state 2.0 bill passes, too, because if the state 2.0 bill passes, then the credentialing requirements that are in the Special Commission on Local and Regional Health's blueprint will become law. And then I would say it's a, it's a steep. That would be very steep for volunteer board members to meet, but not impossible, but it would take years. Um, but, you know, there are various certifications, for instance, the pool operator or, you know, the bathing beach training. Um, those are things that, you know, in general take a couple days. The lead determinator one is a couple days and then you need to go out a few times with a DPH inspector and do and be observed doing the work. You know, the food inspector one, there's a number of hours of training and then you go out and you are watched while you're doing the food training, doing the food inspection and you get feedback on how you're doing on it. Um, many of these things have CEUs that are associated with it, but, you know, you're talking about a couple of years of of pretty vigorous hunting down these trainings and signing up for them, given that it sounds like your board members are not able to work on this, focus on this full time. But there are sources for each of these traditions. So my understanding is that the board voted for this and Carl voted against it. And so I would, in a way, I was hoping to hear from Carl as to why you voted against it. And, and perhaps, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm hearing from you as to why you voted for it, I, I think. I mean, you, you know, right? Yes. Uh, uh, and, and I'm wondering if you have an alternative. I mean, would that be the alternative? Or? No, the alternative, in fact, back in 2011, when this was all starting, we were a three-person Board of Health. And Dave and I kind of got together and said, okay, how are we going to work within this process? And that's why we made a five-person board, so mm -hmm. that we could take all the work that needed to be done and spread it out to everybody. And, and, and we could pick up the food service, we could pick up the Title V, we could pick up, pick up, pick up everything. And, it's, and, it, and it worked very well for a long time. Um, the the, um, the FACOG never impressed the daylights out of either of us. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't put words into his mouth, but I can put words in my own mouth and, and say we, that we were not impressed by the, this silly, you know, how do you how do you get out of the program kind of thing where you've got to pay an additional year in order to get out of it type of thing. And this, is, this, is, this isn't cheap. I mean, you're talking $10,600 additional to your budget for, for next year in order to fund this sort of thing. In the contract, no, it looked no, like $2,000. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not paying a penny more than you were going to pay anyway for the nursing program, thanks to the Public Health Excellence Grant. I'm not asking you well, for the that. Well, the, the nursing program is just, is just one thing. You, you, you have a bunch of other stuff that you're adding on here also. But we're not charging you more for it. Okay. But that's Phoebe, the whole point of the, of, this, of the Public Health Excellence Grant, Carl. And Phoebe, though, remember, too, though, that we are going to subsidize. We, we are not going to charge our, we voted, that we did not want to have a giant leap in our permit fees because our fees are very inexpensive right now. We did vote on an increase in our fees because they're really cheap. They are really cheap. They're really cheap. But the increase is but substantial. But the increase is huge when you, you know, 400%. Yes. So anyway, Phoebe, if you could talk about that, because we are going to have to subsidize that, that difference that we're going to offer our community members for the difference between what we charge and what you're charging us for the fee. I see. Yeah. This, so, this, this contract looks like it goes from 8700 to 10616 right? Right. So it's, right. And is, is that for one year or for the three years? That's the first year. That's the first year. You find out later on what years two and three are. Well, you're, so, I mean, you're part of it. You, you come to meetings where we discuss it and you you know, but you, you weigh in, but um, but that's I mean that that's you know so I I'm not I'm I'm not the biggest FERCOG 
fan in gen just, just you know, uh, yeah. be being on the Council of Governors, there, the, the, which is supposed to be the democratic supervision of FERCOG, I can tell you that there is no, in fact, actual supervision, that the council itself is really depressing and sad, and the level of civic knowledge is very depressing and sad, the level of budget literacy is very depressing and sad, and they're, they're every, it is composed entirely of people that just want to get out of there as soon as possible. I and, agree uh, with that you. isn't my experience of the committees um, at all. I, I mean, I, I, I obviously have been at the meetings that you have been, and I think it is challenging with a group that large. I, our experience of being governed, let me say, is, is that we have some very engaged governors on personnel and on finance and on our executive committee. Who, you know, but I, I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion, yeah. of course, of the, of, the, of the larger meetings. But I just want to say, like, but I'm not. I, I also want to acknowledge that there are many, many islands of excellence within that organization, and that um, there are a lot of you. You are one of them. Um, that that does that, that do a really and you're. Is it rumors are true that you're contemplating retiring? <laughs> I'm not going to make it a whole lot longer. Oh. <laughs> No, no see, 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 that would be that would that would be devastating. That that would just be really bad. Um, I just need a but, vacation after COVID. That's all. I need uh, one um, one day off in sixteen months. But uh, you know, and and that, and that in general, your overhead and your costs for doing services are higher than the town's own overhead and costs for doing similar right. situ yes. services. So it is always in the town's best interest to do those same services whenever possible. And, but at the same time, I am sensitive to what you're saying, and the burden of history being deposited upon your shoulders is doesn't really feel right to me either. And I, I, I get that. Um, That's what but, we tried to, to do. I'm also reminded of how when Charlemont joined years ago, one thing they had just had a lawsuit um, against, you know, a successful lawsuit from a board of health uh, around that something that their board of health had not done that they were supposed to have done. And you know, and for years they said, look, as long as it costs less than the fourteen thousand dollars we paid the lawyer, it's it's a it's a good deal. Now I'm not saying your board of health members or wonderful people are going to get you in, in you know in trouble with the law, but the fact is that it's just not the same world it was before. You know, there are really clear rules, as as they were saying, you know, that that we are part of why it's expensive to be part of something like the COG is we are spending the time to actually get the person spending the dozens of hours, hundreds of hours it takes to be trained to do this work, to be there for you so that you have somebody who is trained, who does meet the certification. Um, and I think there's a lot of, I want to make sure you know that there's a lot of, well, first off, I am only aware of one other town in Franklin County that's still doing it the way you're suggesting it be done in Conway, just so you know, which is what um, I don't think there's a single other community where, where, you're, where the Board of Health is doing all the inspection work. So just to make sure you understand that. And that um, since COVID, one thing that became really clear is that there was really differential outcomes in different towns based on the level of investment in local public health, right? And so the state is really paying attention now. And it's going to, things are going to start to be required and enforced that weren't before. And so I feel like we're, that's another reason why it's helpful for you that you're already part of this thing. You don't have to now go out looking for somebody like another town would be because you're already part of our governing body. You know, you already pay into this. Um, so, just so, as so, context. So, I want you, if I can, if I can just talk about the the fees and the difference in the the waiving of the fees, oh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I, um, well, I, I did just. Uh, back, you know, net, uh, back of the envelope calculation, and I came up with around six thousand dollars in wave in the, the difference between your increased fees and the FERCOG in, uh, increase over your. Oh, oh, I say your. I mean the Board of Health. The 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 Board of Health in, uh, FERCOG is like towers above those. So I, so I, I you, came. When you came up with that number, did you use a list that Jenny gave you of all the people that get permits? Um, and you I, identify I, I, you, it from that? We used last year's annual report okay. for the number of permits. What I think we may have overcounted is there some of those permits are actually done locally. Some of the Title V permits and inspections are done locally. Okay. And those would be at the lower rate without, without the subsidy. So the 6,000 was just a rough number of last year's permits times whatever the difference was. It would have to be just of those. And, and just this is something that I just learned. 
So like we won't charge the school. The school is always free, okay? Because it's a town. We don't charge the school. This, right. No, that's what I mean. You, Froco doesn't charge the school. The town pool will not be charged a fee because it's a town. You know, it's a yes. town service. It's a private organization. But when it's a when it's a um, when it's a business, right? I Beaumont Ferries is me. I will be charged. Like if it, but if it's the town. So I don't. I don't know, but I don't think you're that far off. I would say maybe 4,000, maybe. But it depends on how many people want permits, right? If Bruce's catering wants to come back, right. he's decided he's coming back. How many more will? Will the Airbnbs, I don't know if the one on uh, Carolyn, what's her name? Down there, right, right. I don't know if she's going to come back. It all depends, right? Because it depends on how many people. But so, 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 two, so two things. First of all, because I don't know that this, I, I didn't see that six thousand dollar whatever on in your budget, because that it, the, you're going to have to find that somewhere. Um, and second of all, I see that like the uh, FERCOG is is uh, altering their permitting software to invoice the Board of Health quarterly for the amount waived. That's it's in the contract that I'm reading from. Um, and, but I see that that's just a commitment to do it for the first year. Oh, we're happy to do it as long as you want. That's fine. Yeah. We, this was the arrangement we made with Roe when they joined as well. I mean, I think I think a every town when when you know when they come to this point, there is this you know that's a hard transition if you're trying to actually cover the cost of a professional person who's got to get all these CEUs and all these certifications and gets health insurance and retirement and all that, you are talking about a different a different cost structure, to totally. Um, and what we did with Roe was we agreed to do the exact same thing we're proposing here, um, which is we say, you always can waive a fee, right? Like that's uh, for a municipal, for a nonprofit, the Board of Health always has the ability to waive a fee. That's a core function of government, you know, and so that you don't give that up. And then essentially what we would do is we would go in and if you want to do it this way, where you want the taxpayers of Conway in general to cover the costs for these individual inspections, you know, to be cheaper, that is a completely legitimate approach to how you want to do it. And then we would just waive all but the amount that you are willing to pay in your fee structure, right? And then the person will pay that and we'll bill you for the difference. But we can't, the way we're set up legally and the way the software is set up and the way it makes sense to the people who we're dealing with is that it's one fee structure. Because you think about it, it doesn't make any sense to say, like, I don't know, Carl, I know you work in Conway and you work in Asheville. I assume it's the same price, right? It would be strange for it to be the different a different price, one town over, for the same person to do the same work with the same level of training and the same level of attention, right? So these guys have all laboriously negotiated this fee schedule together, and some of them had to give up quite a bit to get to where we are. You know, gave gave up higher fees to come down. Um, you know, gave up. We have a lot of really robust conversation about the purpose of the fees and what they need to cover, and we carefully analyze the work involved in, in each of those fees. And this is these are reasonable fees to cover the what it takes to do the work. And so what we're offering you is, if you would like to spend the your town funds to keep those numbers low, that's the best mechanism we have to do. Are you recording? What happened yeah. to Joe was about a year later they just said never mind. And then but they waived I think in our in, in our in our instance the previous fees were from previous centuries. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. But I saw, when I saw what the restaurant inspection recording fee was with progress. twenty dollars or something, I, I forget, but that was just you can't like that has to be significantly higher, which I, and I thought that what that your that the board of health fee schedule when I saw it, I thought that looked about right, um, mm -hmm. the, but FERCOG's fee schedule looked like a FERCOG fee schedule, yeah. um, yeah. just well, higher. If you have questions about how they came up, we came up with them. You know, well, I mean, yeah. it's it, it's always involving those towns that are always so much more willing to pay more that skew all your pay, uh, payments up higher. All the our, the towns like us, it, when we're in this with these towns that mm -hmm. spend more for everything, for everything across the board, that drives up our costs because they have to come down and we have to go up and everybody has to meet in the middle. So is, is that different? We're talking about like Charlemont and Lorraine and Monroe here. These are not communities that are relatively more having an yeah. interesting 
it's 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 a fact of um, it's 2021, and the cost of labor is high, and um, asking somebody to use gas to go on these inspections alone is going to cost seven dollars, like of twenty, right? Like, I mean. I hear you, and as a vendor, I love my $20 fee. I mean, as a business. But I think it's dirt cheap, because I pay way more for my permits in other towns. And I don't think it's realistic to, to continue thinking that it's going to be dirt cheap. Like, right, I, I agree. there is this fee and we all, even our businesses, we all have to pay something to keep ourselves sustainable. Um, it's unfortunate. I wish I had the. I wish we didn't have to have money. When we get the service done by FERCOG, it's being done by somebody with certifications who's paid. You know, who's a paid employee of FERCOG. And when you do it, we have volunteer labor that goes out. You pay your own gas cost to go to somebody's house. And, and time. And, and your own time, yes. right? Volunteer, yes. And, Two and, hours. I mean, it makes sense to me that FERCOG would be more expensive than when we have some volunteers in Conway to do it. You and, know, I uh, haven't had much to say because <clears throat> this isn't my area of expertise. I've been immersed in COVID. And um, I think that there's really not much of a question here because how can someone do a job that they're not yet capable of and there's not any one of us sitting here saying, and I'm not learning it. I'd love to go out with Randy. He is a really nice guy who I think does a great job. And I would be happy to also be part of the team of learning how to do this. Uh, I don't think there's a big question here. I'm thrilled that you guys are willing to serve with the Board of Health, let alone, <laughs> you know, let alone spend a massive amount of your time doing inspections for free, uh, you know, you, you know as, as a volunteer service for the town. Um, and, and, and untrained, right? You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm really wondering how you would get trained otherwise. Uh, well, and and I, I do wonder exactly if at the end of a few years, the end of this, the Board of Health may choose to continue this program. Well, that's in, what I was wondering in, too, because the laws are changing and changing and changing year by year, just like in everything. Could I pull out a tooth for you? Sure, could. Do you want me doing it? <laughs> I know how to. <laughs> I got the plug. And I guess that's one of the things that once, once, once these muscles stop being used, they atrophy. And, and whether or not, you know, I, I'd, I'd sure like to, to, to take back some of the things that we. But we find it impossible outsource. to get this, people to serve on these boards. The yeah, I know. Where are they? Yeah. 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 yeah I Where are they? Because yeah. yeah. we've been asking for them I know. for six yeah. months. I know. And, but I also and, wanted to just say that that, that um, those muscles may atrophy, but there are need, there are really intense needs for muscles that your board has. You know, there are things to do on local boards of health that have to do with education, with chronic disease, with connecting residents to services, with setting, you know, looking after young people more and looking into evidence-based strategies for reducing all kinds of things. When you have a bright, smart, educated board here. Running our transfer station. In those things, you know, I mean, there's plenty of work that Yeah. And our seniors are getting more senior. Like, yeah. you know, we're gonna be looking at uh, needs at for, for them <laughs> in our future. I guess I just have a question about why this is tied to, it's like, it's Title V and restaurant inspection, or, it, like, I mean, those two things just seem so disparate to me. It's, it's not Title V, it's, it's just, 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 Erica, it's just everything that Carl isn't keeping. Yeah. Okay. So all the right. Title so V's are going to stay not separate. Title not Title Okay, all right, okay, so, all right, that's my misunderstanding, thank you. Yeah. And then the other thing, to, if, um, so my, I, I've been hearing for years this, uh, uh, the rumors that Conway is overcharged when it comes to some things from FERCOG. And I, I don't really understand where all that comes from, that, that, that the way it was... You can't find out. You can't find out? You'll never find out. Well, I, I, don't, I mean, the only thing I can think of that you might be thinking about is 
one, um, all the towns who are part of any any part of the district that generates fee revenue get the, the benefit of that fee revenue against their price, right? And um, when you're a nursing only town, you're not nursing, as you probably know, can't really generate any money at all except a little bit of flu administration, you know, shot, which goes right back into band aids and, you know, and, and flu signs and things. So there's no fee generated by public health nursing, it is just the right thing to do. Um, nobody pays you to investigate a TV case or whatever. Um, and, but for all those other programs, like food inspection, short-term lodging inspections, you know, those those generate revenue. And those, so someone looking at the size of your town and the size of your assessment from the health district might be wondering why some of these seem like they're lower or they're the same, but they're getting all these other services. And that's purely a function of the um, permit revenue. You don't have anything to offset the price because you're just using the nursing program. Now, of course, you won't have you know, this, this arrangement we're having. We'll tilt, we'll tilt that a little because at least a small portion of those permit fees will be getting collected centrally and will be counted um, for your next year. But and that's the only but, thing I can think of. I mean, and, and I and, I, and, and, I, and I and I re and I remember last year from from our FERCOG, the total FERCOG budget, the budget for the nursing services went up the most of every line item, I believe. It was the only one that was close to double-digit increase. And, yes, and that came back down uh, dramatically after we got the grant. Um, so that was, that was what you're talking about the January budget yeah, paper we had, yeah. we were talking about, like, mm -hmm. in January, we didn't even know what was going on with COVID, right? So we had a, we had a very dramatic proposed increase, which we did not end up going through. Can I remind people that we've got roughly 10 minutes before I think the Board of Health meeting yeah. starts mm -hmm. in the next room? All right. Um, so, so is this something that the, the board is, and we're going to vote on as a board, or, um, or is this just an informational meeting? I don't know. Well, so, so there's a contract. There's a contract that that you wanted signed by June 30th. Yeah, I want to so, go on an inspection with Randy on Friday. Okay. So, so, so the 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 um the 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 sentence in the right on the signature page I can cross out the in fifth in FY twenty two um, where where it's talking about what what FERCOG is doing with the permitting software and the permit fees but then it just says but only in FY twenty two oh I see sure yeah you can cross that out okay. yeah I I would agree with that Phil because I I mean I maybe I want to go with that software I, I got a demonstration last week like that thing is fantastic and. Uh, Jay, like I want you to press the button, print those permits, get them out. I mean, time savings. Yeah. Hello. No, it's great. Yeah. And so then, yes, I would like and, to. And then add all oh, and for your budget for next year, you're going to need to put that. I, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. I would think you would want to put that six thousand dollar thing in the yeah. as a line item in the budget. I think I, I think I already know where that money can come from. <laughs> yeah, we. Oh, yeah. I, I already know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll get to the whole budget thing. Like, we'll, we look forward to seeing that. That's what I told them about. Devon, <laughs> um, just so you know, I mean, you were at our meeting, but I think you're the one member who hadn't signed. So there's just me and Jackie. I don't know if you wanted the yeah, opportunity sign. to sign it. Sure. Yeah. 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 And then the other. I don't know if that was a way. So the the other thing was that the the termination notice. Um, wanted to just have it terminate at the end of three years without any further notices required. I don't think that's a reasonable ask, and I'll tell you why. Because they have full-time people, and it's, I think the one-year notice is, in all fairness, a, a conscientious decision when you have staff. Like, they need notice for what they changes they have to make for their staff rather than having us quit on them and then saying to the staff, okay, you're So I propose off. giving them a three-year notice on the No, you have signed. to give them one year. You have to give them one but year. But I also want to say that the other thing that needs to happen in that year is we need to get you back out of our software, get you digital copies of all of the inspection reports, all your people need to know where to turn to get a permit next time, right? There's there's like a, there's a hand you have to build it back down. All right, put that guy. Okay. <laughs> and I don't think it's unreasonable for us to like know in 20, 23 whether we're gonna want to quit and keep it in house like we should know that a year in advance we should know anyway. like in a year but you, but so. you might not know three years in advance 
Right. You can give it. You can give me your notice anytime you like. I mean, that's that's. So do we need to have an official vote? Well, um, so so that yeah, so the vote would be to instruct the select board chair to sign it on behalf of the select board. I'll second that. Um, this is yeah, that's motion, man. You want to vote? So, um, well, personally, I mean, the fact that there, I, I feel like there are a lot of businesses in. I mean, I just feel like I wish that there was more representation. I, I, I just feel like you don't have enough information. I would like to abstain. Mm. I mean, I wish that people, that other people here were here who were going to be affected by this. I think that's a really big, you know, to be inspected by the Board of Health and then going to be inspected by, you know, the county. I think that's a really I big I think I hear your Board of Health saying, though, that they would yeah. be happy to come with us. And I yeah. think they, they are Yeah, there although, Carl. <laughs> Carl is retiring. Right. This is yeah, today. I just had one last meeting with us. Yeah, Carl, what's the deal? <laughs> I still respect you. <laughs> it's not enough. You need to make it to 24. No, that's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, okay, but we only need we only need a quorum. I would actually abstain. I will abstain. Well, I think the vote is for the select board I side. Because it's because not the board of health has already. No, yeah, started. the board of health has already been. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's. The, so, so I assume that what you made was a motion. And I seconded um, it. I wasn't so, a motion. I was well, just talking out loud. But um, <laughs> sounded like one. <laughs> sounded like one. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll vote aye. And it's your vote. I, I don't see. I don't see that we have it because it's not a choice between FERCOG and Board of Health. It's just a choice of FERCOG. Yeah. It is um, a choice yeah. of FERCOG. Yeah. And, and um, um, you know, and like that, it, you know, you asked about the businesses. Very few businesses want to be inspected, <laughs> right. but almost every business realizes they need to be inspected and want it done quickly and professionally. And I think what I heard is the FERCOG inspector, as would the local folks if they're doing it, would work with, with businesses to say, hey, look, you've got this, this, and this, phase it in. I'm not going to shut you down today, but the, the inspectors and the FERCOG inspectors would work with the businesses to help them get it done feasible. But to not inspect is a huge liability to the town. Mm -hmm. And we haven't inspected since last year. If someone gets I'm sick over after a eating at, at a place, an establishment in Conway, and they say, were they inspected? Oh, yes, they were inspected. The person came in and just checked everything off. There's a liability. If they get sick and someone says, oh, no, they haven't been inspected in three years, that's a liability. I look out for the town from a liability perspective, as well as other mm -hmm. things. And I think that having trained professional inspectors that you can work with to make sure that they're being as gentle and as reasonable as possible without just whitewashing the inspection. I think this is necessary to protect Tom. And wasn't Randy just meant to be our mentor? I mean, he won't be the end-all, be a be-all, end-all inspector, as I understand. Isn't that right, Tom? It, when we hire him, he, it is both. And we can we have input with Randy if we're on there to right. voice our, He's our concerns. He, he introduced but himself to the business owner on. as the future inspector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that he was our sort of instructor, and that we were going to be the inspector. It, no, that is not how we discussed it. You, you no. may be okay. after a few years, it sounds like. Oh, okay. As long as I, just, I, I really okay. wish that there were more um, business owners here who were impacted by this decision. I, I, I wish that. Well, I mean, everybody, every business owner will be impacted by the fee schedule, that's for sure. Well, um, yeah, but I mean, they're not. But, and I'm sure there will be requests for waivers that filter their way up, like there is usually every year. Um, so uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't see that there's much of a choice. I do hope that, I do, I do hope without putting all the weight of history on your shoulders. Um, you know, the, 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 like one of the things that we hear is from all the people on fixed incomes begging us to keep the cost of government down, begging us to, to, to you know, to, to not do things like this. Um, and it's just always a tension in everything that we do and um, that I try to think Help. about. Yeah? Can I just add one thing to yeah. that? Um, 
I just want you to know that, you know, one of the other things that I do here is I am working absolutely tirelessly with a group of people from across the state to try to get the state to actually fund local health departments so that you don't have to have this kind of conversation. And it's taken, you know, 15 years, but we are picking up steam. You know, there is real investment in local health for the first time in, in ever in Massachusetts. We're one of the only states in the country that doesn't provide state money to your board of health to do this kind of work. So it's my urgent hope, you know, my fervent hope, and, and I'm spending a lot of time, in, in, I was talking with the Senate President this morning. I mean, we are working as hard as we can to try to get some of this huge federal money to an ongoing, sustainable state support local health functions so that you wouldn't be worrying about folks on a fixed income having to spend a ton of money to fix a septic system or something but like that. But this is just one of sort of the Hobbesian choices that awaits the Board of Health at every turn with everything that they have to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That the, a, a, every use decision about the transfer station that is fraught with peril and you and will have people upset no matter what you do. Right. And just all the, and that's, Throwing trash yeah. away for ten dollars a year and, upsets and, people. Uh, you know what? What to do about the increasing cost of of, of, of refuse disposal and just they should uh, look at what they're charging. Mm. Um, okay, well, and all, all these all these things, <laughs> but yeah, Actually, any of them, yeah. yeah. So I have a motion. Bob made yeah, a motion. Yeah, a motion, and I'll vote yes because we don't have a choice. Right. And, um, so I believe the motion carries uh, two and, and one abstain. Thanks, Phil. Abstention. Um, and uh, we have to function as a government, as a town. We do. But, I think uh, it's the right choice because yeah. I was out the door and they said no. That's what I fear. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, that's my fear. As a, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm, not gonna, I'm not going, I am not, I didn't take on this humongous task. I'm not. But as Tilda and Jackie both said, I'm not opposed to, I, I love my town, I love my community, I love getting my milk at Baker's when I drive by. I, we want to like living here, but I want to do it safely, mm -hmm. and yeah, I want, I want to do it right. I'm not immune to reason and good arguments, I'm just, re <laughs> I'm just resistant to them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, can I, mean, I say, I, I think I, there's a brief announcement before you close. Can we have one announcement, yes. Uh, yes. Dear, dear <laughs> Our report, former Board have. of Health person. Are we done with baby? No, no, you should oh, stay yeah. and witness this uh, ceremonial. Uh, <laughs> Five minutes, Not even, not even, not thank even, not even. Thank you so much, even. Phoebe. But thank you. Sorry oh, to give you such you. a hard no, no, time, no, no, as no. always. Here, baby. I'll go down that way so you can... Uh, My pleasure, Phil. So, Carl Melke. <laughs> <laughs> For 22 oh. years? Or, now, did you say it was 23? Oh, 23. 23. I might have to redo my engraving. <laughs> this is for all your years of service. I'm not going to make you unwrap it right here. Oh, you're, you're, you're welcome to come on. I wonder what it could be. It's a gold. Shovel. Uh -huh. Let them open it. Do you want to open it? You're more than welcome to open it. Oh, I'm yes. sure he needs another tool. Gold? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new thing. It's shinier than all his other tools. I'm just hoping that nothing happens. I mean, our start with the long process. <laughs> so Look at that. that. This is so beautiful. You can't do it. Wow. <laughs> it's a nice one. It is. Now, did it? Yep, yeah, okay, good. Everything's in place. Yep. Now, you got to read the plaque. And that it is engraved. That un I you have to take the whole pink thing off. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> Carl Nelke, for 22 years of service to the Board of Health. With gratitude, we dig you. <laughs> we dig you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> dig holes, plant dig things. Dig holes. Dig holes. Dig holes. Dig holes. Dig holes. Don't go hitting people with so, it. No, I wouldn't do it. Did you spray it? Is it really gold? Yeah, it's gold. <laughs> it's gold. It's gold. It's gold. So with, thank you, Phoebe. Thanks, Phoebe. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you. You're terrific. I'll see you soon. I, I have to say, I have, I have such a great respect for like the Conway Board of Health because when I first moved to Conway, like, oh my God, it seems like to my ears. And I was like, tw I was like, I think it was like 
20 when I moved to Conway, and we lived in that house, like, right, that's actually where I parked my car in my old driveway, the, that's now been condemned. Oh, like the, oh, oh, no. And I had, like, a brand new baby, and I got a knock on the door. I was, like, nursing an infant, and Dave Chichester was, like, on my porch, and he was, like, do not drink your water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, who are you? He's like, I'm from the Board of Health. And I'm like, One keeping you safe. And I was like, oh my god, this town is amazing. I think you, I know Ron wanted to sign up. I don't know if you wanted to sign up. Well, sure. It doesn't matter if you weren't there. I don't think I'm going to be good. I'm coming. I'm nice. It would not matter. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't tell her. I didn't ask her to or whatever. But, I mean, still, I would like. Yeah, yeah, I did she vote? Did she sign you? Did she vote? Did she sign you? 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 Did she sign